What's up you guys, I'm Patrick of Coaster Fanatics and today I'm bringing you my list of the top 5 defunct roller coaster manufacturers. All of these companies made some really good roller coasters and made a positive impact in the theme park industry. Keep in mind that Morgan will not be on this list as I do not consider them defunct. They were simply purchased by Chance Rides and then formed Chance Morgan. See which defunct manufacturers I ranked as the best starting now. So, kicking off this list in the number 5 spot, I have Gia Vanola. Now, I know this is a little controversial considering the company only built 3 roller coasters, but I just couldn't put Pinfari or Togo on this list. Gia Vanola built 2 hyper coasters here in the US and 1 invert in South Africa. They used identical track to the kind you find on B&M coasters. In fact, in the company's later years, they actually fashioned steel for some of the B&M roller coasters. Now, I haven't been on one of the Giovanola coasters yet, but I do look forward to giving it a try. I've heard nothing but good things about Goliath and Titan. They both have a combination of an out-and-back and a twister layout, which is pretty cool. I'll be riding Titan this year and Goliath next year. I look forward to comparing them to some of the B&M hyper coasters. Next, in the number 4 spot, I have the DIN Corporation. This manufacturer, to me, is one of the most important manufacturers in roller coaster history. Charles Din, who used to work for Kings Island, was one of the main guys in charge of building the Beast, which is one of my favorite wooden roller coasters. After leaving Kings Island, he formed the Din Corporation, which specialized in moving and rebuilding older roller coasters. Their most famous relocation has to be the Phoenix, which was relocated from Playland Park in San Antonio, Texas. The Din Corporation also built several ground-up roller coasters, such as the Texas Giant, the Mean Streak, and the Wolverine Wildcat. Pretty much every one of these coasters were rough, which is why most have been demolished or refurbished by Rocky Mountain Construction. Now the reason this company is so important is because it was the starting point for some of the modern manufacturers we have today. When Charles Din closed the Din Corporation, his daughter formed Custom Coasters International, which we will talk about in a minute. Once that company closed, the owners, designers, and engineers went on to form the Gravity Group and Great Coasters International, which build some of the best modern wooden roller coasters today. If it wasn't for the DIN Corporation, these companies and the roller coasters they built probably wouldn't exist today. That reason alone is why the DIN Corporation is one of the top defunct roller coaster manufacturers, in my opinion. Ranking in the number 3 spot, I have Schwarzkopf. This is another very important manufacturer, especially in the steel coaster category. Anton Schwarzkopf built and designed some of the greatest steel coasters in history, from the famous Jet Stars to their Wildcat coasters and even the Shuttle Loop models. Back in the 60s and 70s, there was a Schwarzkopf coaster in just about every amusement park. Today, not many have survived, but some of their more famous ones are still running, such as the New Revolution, which was the first to ever feature a vertical loop. And then there are classics like the Whizzer with its iconic spiral lift hill, and Tiger which is the only original Jetstar model left in the United States. I never pass up an opportunity to travel back in time on an old Schwarzkopf coaster. The nostalgia on these rides are unmatched by any other roller coaster manufacturer. This year I believe the only Schwarzkopf coaster I'll be riding is the Super Duper Looper, and I can't wait. I highly recommend that you guys ride some of these classics. Who knows how much longer they will be around. Now for our top two. Next in the number two spot I have Aerodynamics. Most of you guys know that I'm not a big fan of aero coasters, but it is undeniable the impact this company made in the theme park industry. Even today it's pretty hard to find a park that doesn't have at least one coaster built by Aerodynamics. This company was the first to use tubular steel track. It was done on the Matterhorn bobsleds in 1959. From that point on, Aerodynamics continued to break barriers and do things with roller coasters that haven't been done before. For example, they were the first to build coasters with 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 inversions, which is a pretty cool accomplishment. And then there was X2, which was the first ever 4D coaster. Since then, 4D models have become very popular in recent years as other manufacturers are now selling their own version of the 4D. Their biggest accomplishment, however, has to be Magnum XL200, which was the first ever hypercoaster. Since then, hypercoasters have become one of the most popular coaster types, and that was kind of the big problem that Aerodynamics had. 
They were the first to build a lot of stuff, but companies like B&M and Intamin came in and perfected it, which is why the company failed in my opinion. But like I said, it is undeniable what Aero did for the industry, and that's why they are one of the best roller coaster manufacturers in history. As good as Aerodynamics was, there is still one company that made some of my all-time favorite roller coasters. And that's Custom Coasters International. This defunct manufacturer built some of my all-time favorite wooden roller coasters like Shivering Timbers, The Raven, Ghost Rider, and The Hoosier Hurricane, just to name a few. A lot of these companies' roller coasters still rank very high in the roller coaster rankings. In fact, the number one wooden roller coaster in the last four years has been Boulder Dash. That fact alone shows you how good the coasters were this company built. Unlike the DIN Corporation, only a handful of the CCI coasters have been either demolished or converted to steel by Rocky Mountain Construction. Speaking of steel, one of the cool things about a lot of the CCI coasters is that many of them use steel supports, which was something that other wood manufacturers weren't doing at the time. Many of their coasters were thought to be pretty intense and full of airtime, and I agree. Shivering Timbers is just packed with airtime, and the Raven is one of the more intense wooden roller coasters they ever built. The company lasted only 11 years, but it is undeniable the great coasters they built in that short amount of time. This year I'll be riding several CCI coasters I haven't rode before, and I can't wait. I am really looking forward to trying Boulder Dash for the first time and seeing why it's ranking number one for the last few years. So there you have it you guys, that was my list of the top five defunct roller coaster manufacturers. What do you guys think? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section and share your defunct manufacturer list. Also share some manufacturers you think I may have missed. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button. And if you're new around here, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching you guys. Have a good one. I'll catch you all in the next video very, very soon.